This is Math 141, and we are going to uh, still talk about shifted conics, but we're going to talk about what if the equation doesn't come to us in the in the form already in this form where we can just read off the information and graph it. Um, and so, for example, what if we get an equation that looks like this? How could I manipulate this to get it into a form where I can? Um, I can graph it. And what would that graph even look like? Well, I have some clues in here. I have an, an x squared that's positive and a y squared that's positive. So both x and y are squared. And they're both the same side. They're both positive. So if this is graphable, it's probably, it feels like it would be an ellipse or a circle, right? Because uh, those are cases where it has an x squared plus a y squared in it. So we're going to uh, talk then about how to how to manipulate this to get it into a solvable form, I'm sorry, graphable, a graphable form, get it into kind of graphing form. And before I do, I want to remind you of um, a skill called completing the square. And completing the square, it's a complete, complete the square. It's a, um, it's an algebra technique uh, for solving quadratics or for dealing with quadratics. So first off, let's talk about squares. So like x plus 3 squared. Um, as you know, that's not just x squared plus 9, because squaring means times itself. Like x plus 3 squared means x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is x squared plus 3x and 3x again, 6x plus 9. So let's think about where these pieces come from. That, that first term comes from x times x. That last term comes from 3 times 3. And that middle term, it's two of these 3x's. Right? So I could think of this, this 6 as two 3x's, and that 9 as 3 squared. So notice that um, the middle term, if I take half of that 6 and square it, I get the 9. So I can take something like uh, x plus 5 squared, and I know that I have an x squared here. I'm going to have two of these, so plus 10x plus 25. So my relationship, if I have um, something like x plus, I'll just call it b, um, I'm going to have x squared plus 2bx plus b squared. That's, that's my relation for, for a square. And this is a square. Um, it's literally a square, like x plus 3 squared times itself, but also physically, like if this side is x plus 3 and this side is x plus 3, when you multiply them together, you get a you get a square where this is an x squared, this is a 3x, this is a 3x, and this is a 9. So when we com when we complete the square, we're making we're taking something and we're turning it into a, a square. So we haven't completed the square yet, but we have everything we need in order to do it. So the act of actually completing the square. Like if I had something like x squared plus 12x, and I want to figure out like what would I have to put there in order to make this a perfect square? Like this is a square. So in other words, I want this to be x plus something squared. Um, how do I complete that square? And so what this term would have to be is, let's see, half of 12 is 6. And if I square 6, that's 36. So this would have to be a 36 to make this an x plus 6 squared. And again, notice what I'm doing. I'm taking half of the middle term and squaring it. Half of the, just the, not the whole term, half of the um, coefficient of the middle term. So if I had something like uh, x squared plus, uh, I don't know, 30x, I take half of it, and then I'd square that. And that's what I need in order to complete the square. So. Keeping that skill in mind, let's take a take a peek at this right here. I have x squared minus 6x plus y squared plus 10y equals negative 25. So now let's talk technique. I'm going to kind of make a little bit of space there. So I have this x squared minus 6x, and I have this y squared plus 10y. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to complete the square for the x's. And I'm going to complete the square for the y's. So here and here. Because what I want to be able to do is rewrite this as 
something squared and something squared. That's, that's my goal. So I'm going to complete the square for the x's. So half of negative 6 is negative 3. And if I square negative 3, that's a 9. So I added 9. So notice I added 9 on the left-hand side. I'm going to have to do the same thing on the right-hand side to keep it equal, right? Because this is equal, so I need to do the same weight on both sides. Um, and then what happens here is this then gets written as x minus 3 squared, right? It's just like x and then whatever half of this of that coefficient was squared. I'll do the same thing with the y's now. Half of 10 is 5. And if I square 10, that's, that's I'm sorry, if I square 5, that's 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides now. So then this becomes y plus 5 squared. So see what I've done is I've, I've actually added that 9. By adding that 9, I had to do it on both sides. But by adding that 9 over here, I completed the square for the x's. By adding the 25 here, I completed the square for the y's. Now on the right-hand side, I just need to do some bookkeeping, clean it up. Negative 25 plus 25 is 0, so 9. And then now I can see this is just a circle with a center at 3, negative 5 and a radius of 9. So this idea of completing the square is, uh, is how we're going to rewrite things that are in general form into some graphing form. So I have an equation that's in this form, the 25x squared plus 100 and all that. Um, and I want to figure out what its graph is going to be, and then I could sketch a graph of it. And now, like in this one, notice I had x squared plus y squared, and they both have the same coefficient. That makes me think this will probably be a circle. It is a circle. In this one, I have x squared plus y squared, but they have different coefficients. That's probably going to be an ellipse, like because the x squared and the y squared are weighted differently. So let's do technique for this. Uh, I'm going to get, again, I'm going to think about a couple of different kind of sections here. I'm going to think about the x's and I'm going to think about the y's. Now remember, I'm trying to get it into a form where I have, you know, x plus something squared, y plus something or minus something squared. And uh, first thing I'm going to need to do, I, I can't complete the square easily unless this coefficient is a 1. So with these x terms, I'm going to factor out a 25. And I'm left with that. And then with these y terms, I'm going to factor out that 4. I'm just dividing the 4 out from everything. And let me think about this. 56 divided by 4. All right, so I'm here. So now that I've done that, now I'm going to complete the square for the x's and the y's. And I'm going to complete the square just like in these parentheses right here. So. Let me complete the square for this. Uh, half of 4 is 2. And if I square 2, that's a 4. So I added 4. Now, I need to make up for it over here. But it's not really just a 4. Notice, like, this whole thing's times 25. So 25 times 4 is actually 100. This 4 is actually worth 100 because I have 25 of them. So I'm going to add 100 over here to make up for that adding. 4, which is really 100. <laughs> um, and then on this next one, half of negative 14 is negative 7. And if I square negative 7, uh, that gives me a 49. So I'm going to add 49. And same idea, though. Uh, I need to make up for it on this side, keep that equation balanced. But it's not just a 49. It's four 49s. And 4 times 49 is 196. So I'm going to add 196 here. And so then now I'm set. I completed the square here. So this is still 25 times x plus 2 squared. So still 4. I completed the square here. So this is y minus 7 squared. And then I do some bookkeeping over here. And I clean it up and I get 100. All right, it's still not quite in that form where I can recognize exactly all the graphing pieces because uh, it's looking ellipsish, but this is usually a 1. So I'm going to divide everything by 100 to turn that into a 1. And so this is equal to 1. And so just think about this, this fraction right here, 25 over 100. 
25 over 100 is the same as 1 over 4, right? Like, like these are both divisible by 25. And then 4 over 100 is 1 over 25. And then here I have it in this form. I know my center is going to be at negative 2, 7. And I know then my box is going to be offset of 4 in the x direction. I'm sorry, offset of 2 in the x direction, offset of 5 in the y direction. And then I could just go ahead and graph my ellipse from there. I have two more examples like this that I want to do. So as I take a peek at this first one, I have my um, 9x squared and negative 16y squared. Just looking ahead, this is a 9x squared. This is like an x squared minus a y squared. That implies hyperbola to me. So this, this might end up being a hyperbola. So let me see what I can do. Again, I'm going to do some grouping. I'm going to think of my x's together and my y's together. So with my x's, first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, factor out a 9 here. So I just have this uh, x squared minus 8x. Now here, this is subtle. This is a negative 16. So what I'm going to factor out of here is a negative 16. Um, I've divided everything by a negative number. So this this will change. The sign will change. So negative 32 divided by negative 16 is positive 2. And that whole thing's equal to 16. So let me uh, do a little work here. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So I've completed the square here. I changed that color just so we can trace it better. And I've added that 16, but it's not really worth 16. There's 9 of them. So uh, 9 times 16 is 144. So this is really worth 144, so I'm going to need to add that in on the right-hand side. And then over here, uh, I'm going to complete the square with the y's. Uh, half of 2 is 1. If I square 1, I get 1. It's not really worth 1. It's worth negative 16. There's negative 16 of them. So I need to subtract 16 to balance it out over here. Great, so let me clean up over here. That goes to 144. This is 9, x minus 4, quantity squared, minus 16, y plus 1, quantity squared. Now, notice how like I write this negative 4 down here and this plus 1 down here. I'm not adding that or subtracting that. I'm just keeping track of it. Like I, That's my notation. I just write that so that I'm going to square it to get the 16. I also am going to know this, this factors to x minus 4. Right? That just is like, for me, notes, so I don't have to think harder later. Um, keep going from here. I want this equal to 1, not equal to 144. That's my general form. So I'm going to divide both sides by 144. And if I think about this fraction, um, 9 over 144, that reduces to 1 16th. So this would be x minus 4 squared over 16 minus, this reduces to 1 ninth, y plus 1 squared over 9 equals 1. And I have a hyperbola because it's subtraction. Uh, I know my center's at 4, negative 1. I know my offsets, and I could graph it from there. All right, one last example. This one. Um, I've got this plus 16. I'm going to get this plus 16 out of the way. So I'm just going to subtract 16 from both sides. And I'll do a little bit of work here too. Uh, for these y's, I'll factor out the 16. y plus oh, y squared plus 2y. For these x's, I'll factor out the, the negative 9. So minus 9, x squared. And this was a negative 9 that came out of this, so this is minus 8x. A little room over here. And uh, let me complete the square on these. So half of 2 is 1, square 1 is 1, but it's not worth 1. There's 16 of them. That's really a 16. So I balance it out with adding 16 on that side. Half of negative 8 is negative 4, square that is positive 16. 
but it's not really a positive 16. It's 16 times negative 9, which is negative 144. So I need to subtract 144 over here to get this going on. And let me think about what I have now. So I have 16 times y plus 1 squared minus 9 times x minus 4 squared equals, and if I add all this together, it equals negative 144. All right, so that negative might make you uncomfortable at first, but I just want everything to be, I, I want that to be equal to a 1. So I'm just going to divide both sides by negative 144. And if I, uh, as I do that, not if I do it, because I'm actually doing it, 16 over negative 144, that's like a negative 1 ninth. So this would be negative uh, y plus 1 squared over 9. Negative by negative is positive. So this would be x minus 4 squared over 16 equals 1. And notice that um, basically it's pretty, pretty much that, right? Um, it's x squared minus y squared. So I wrote it this way, but we might be used to writing it this way. This is negative something plus something else. That could be write, written as that something else minus the something. I can see it's a hyperbola. I can see where my center is. I know my offset. I can sketch a graph for that. All right, so some good algebra practice this time around. Uh, message me with any questions you have, and good luck on that assignment.